A new era in art has come about in Leederville, Western Australia. Functional art, taking advantage of the sun and solar energy through flowers. Laura Smith reports. Have you ever wandered through many of Perth's business or office buildings and saw a patch of grass or maybe even some flowers? It wouldn't be that unusual, would it? But how about three six foot tall solar power generating flowers? We're in West Leaderville today to find out all about these new functioning art pieces. My name is George Zombori. I'm from Hungary, but people call me George, so that's much easier. All right, and tell me, first of all, when were these flowers built? It was just finished in uh, December, the first day of December, and uh, we just completed it after having something like a uh, uh, six months of preparation work. So. Finally, we made it happen. And uh, what's the function of these flowers? These flowers are made to be attracting people's attention to understand that this building basically is a zero carbon energy building, meaning that we have 100 kilowatt solar PV on top of the building. But unfortunately, when people walking by, no one can see that. Basically, these flowers are collecting the energy from the sun. They are able to store it in batteries and during the nighttime, there is an option to run the LED of the building and we are able to run the water feature of the building 24 hours as well. And uh, what's the sort of public reaction been so far? Well, to be honest, I only could experience the first two weeks. People were walking by, they were reading the messages. You can read underneath certain things that you might be very experienced when you read those sentences. And I'm sure people are, uh, people are surprised what type of strange animal could that be on along the street and um, do you think this is going to generate more interest not only in renewable energy but renewable energy as an art form as well well i would say this is one of the first public art which is made of uh, basically custom designed solar panels and one of the purpose of this was to prove to people that solar doesn't have to be ugly it could look not only rectangular aluminium framed something but they could look uh, pretty different and this is one of the examples that people fantasy can be just flying over. Yeah, I suppose when most people think of renewable energy, they think of wind farms and a lot of people find them ugly. So do you think that this could also create a sort of a fusing between there'll be more pieces like this propping up all over the place? I'm 100% sure because this technology has improved a lot in the, in the last decades. And nowadays you could be able you are able to produce solar panels which are colorful, like it can be green, it can be purple, you might be surprised, but any shape as well. And I think this new technology should be implemented more and more, and especially in Australia where the sun is pretty dense. So I think this is a great future for all of us. You know, we have a cactus in the middle of uh, Perth city centre, which costs quite a lot of money and has no function whatsoever. How would you how would you combat that? What's your reaction to these art pieces that cost an incredible amount of money but do nothing, whereas you have one here which is multi-purpose, really? If I remember, it was only 1.2 million, but anyway, it's pretty high. Uh, I think I was trying to convince some of the mayors uh, around Perth that public art could have a different function, and one of the message could be, or, or the different layer of a public art could be somehow educate people that we have sustainability as well and we have new forms which can have functional uh, advantages or benefits as well. So I, I am very optimistic that maybe some of these council members will be more uh, welcoming these type of ideas in the future and I'm ready to take any new ideas and, and make them happen in any of these councils. What has your relationship been like with the Perth City Council so far? Uh, I was lucky to be participating on some of some of meetings and I was able to give a sh short lecture regarding how solar trees and solar flowers could be attracting more tourists in Perth and I think I visited the deputy mayor of Perth as well a few years ago and uh, I think I'm very happy now because some of the first examples have been realized and I think he would have a, he would have more confidence now to see how it can fit into the environment of, of Perth and how we can innovate Perth in, in a very uh, new way. Definitely. Do you have anything else you want to add? 
Well, the, the nice experience was when this one was completed, we got a phone call uh, from the council, one of the council of Cambridge, and she, she, she just congratulated us and she felt a shame that it should be in the middle of, of some more uh, pedestrian zone and, and more people could visit this one. So I'm very happy if that can happen one day that more and more popular locations could have something, this kind of experience in the future. Zolt is hoping that with designs like his, more people in the council and in the community can turn green. Not just green with envy, but also green in their energy consumption. Reporting for Undercurrent, I'm Laura Smith.